Section 2, the second advent of Elijah and John the Baptist. It was foretold by the prophet Malachi that Elijah would come again, Malachi 4, 5. And it was Jesus' testimony that John the Baptist was none other than the second advent of Elijah, Matthew 11, 14, 17 to 13. However, John the Baptist himself, as well as the Jewish people in general, did not know the fact that John was the second advent of Elijah, John 1, 21. John's doubt of Jesus, Matthew 11:3 followed by the disbelief of the people, finally compelled Jesus to take the way of the cross. 1. The trend of Jewish thought concerning the second advent of Elijah. During the period of the United Kingdom, the ideal of the temple was invaded by Satan due to the corruption of King Solomon. God set up the ideal of the temple the second time in order to prepare the people to receive the Messiah as a substantial temple. He worked for the separation of Satan by sending them four major prophets and twelve minor prophets. It was to stop Satan from preventing the realization of this ideal, that God had his people destroy the god Baal by sending a special prophet Elijah and having him fight against the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. However, Elijah ascended into heaven without having fully accomplished his divine mission, 2 Kings 2.11, and Satan's power was again rampant. Therefore, in order that the ideal of the substantial temple, Jesus, might be realized, there should first be the providence of having another prophet succeed Elijah and accomplish the mission of separating Satan, which he had left undone by, on the earth. Because of this providential necessity, the prophet Malachi foretold the second advent of Elijah, Malachi 4.5. The fervent hope of the Jewish people who believed in these prophecies was, of course, the advent of the Messiah. But we must know that they nonetheless longed for the second coming of Elijah. This is because God clearly promised the people through the prophet Malachi that he would send the prophet Elijah prior to the advent of the Messiah in order to have him prepare the way of the Lord, Malachi 4.5. Meanwhile, the prophet Elijah had ascended into heaven nearly 900 years before the birth of Jesus, 2 Kings 2.11, and we are familiar with the occasion when he appeared to Jesus' disciple in spirit, Luke 9.31. The Jewish people believed that Elijah, being in heaven, would come from heaven in the same manner as he had ascended into heaven. Therefore the Jewish people at that time were waiting for Elijah to come again, looking up into heaven in the expectation that Elijah would come on the clouds. However, there had been as yet no rumor of Elijah's coming, as Malachi had prophesied, when Jesus appeared, claiming to be the Messiah. Thus, great confusion was caused in Jerusalem. So, the disciples were faced with an argument against Jesus being the Messiah, Matthew 17, 10. If Jesus were he, then where was Elijah, who was to come before him, Malachi 4, 5. The disciples, at a loss as how to reply, asked Jesus directly, and he answered that John the Baptist was none other than Elijah himself, for whom they had waited, Matthew 11, 14, 17, 13. Jesus' disciples, who believed him to be the Messiah, could believe without question Jesus' testimony, that John the Baptist was Elijah. But how could the Jewish people accept it when they did not know who Jesus was? Jesus himself, knowing that they would not easily believe his testimony, said, If you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. Matthew 11:14. The Jewish people could not believe Jesus' testimony that John the Baptist was Elijah because it came after John himself clearly denied the fact. John 1, 21. 2. The way of the Jewish people. Jesus said that John the Baptist was none other than Elijah, for whom the Jewish people had waited so long, Matthew 11:14. Well, on the contrary, John the Baptist himself had already denied the fact. Then whose words were they to believe and follow? It depended upon which of the two appeared to be more believable to the people at that time. Let us then examine how Jesus appeared to the Jewish people from their own standpoint. Jesus was a young man of little formal education. He had been born and raised in the poor and lowly home of a carpenter. This young man emerged unknown, calling himself the Lord of the Sabbath, and yet violated the Sabbath, which the Jews strictly observed, Matthew 12, 1 to 8. Therefore Jesus came to be known as one who wanted to abolish the law, which was the symbol of salvation to the Jews, Matthew 5, 17. Therefore Jesus was persecuted by Jewish leaders and had to gather fishermen to be his disciples. He became a friend to tax collectors, harlots, and sinners, eating and drinking with them. Matthew 11:19. More than that, Jesus declared that the tax collectors and harlots would enter the kingdom of heaven ahead of the Jewish leaders. Matthew 21:31. On one occasion, a woman weeping began to wet Jesus' feet with her tears, wipe them with her hair, kiss them, 
and anoint them with a flask of precious ointment, Luke 7, 37-38. Such conduct would not be acceptable even in today's society, and how much more unacceptable it would have been within the strict ethics of Jewish society, in which they could stone an adulterous woman to death. Nevertheless, Jesus not only accepted it, but reproached his disciples who had rebuked the woman. In fact, he also praised her, Luke 7, 44-50, Matthew 26, 7-13.